Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the capacitance, definition, derivation and the problems. First we will see the capacitance. You know that capacitance is nothing but it is formed using two conducting media with an insulator in between them. So the capacitor is a storage element. It is nothing but there are two conducting mediums are available. In between insulating material will be presented. So the two conducting media with an insulator is called as a capacitor, right? First we will see the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor. There are various types of capacitors available. First we will see the what is the expression for capacitance in case of parallel plate capacitor. So this parallel plate capacitor is shown in the diagram. So this is the two plates are available. Plate 1 and plate 2 parallelly displaced. The dielectric is available in between the parallel plate. So the V is the applied voltage between the parallel plate and the distance between these two plate is D meters. Right? The parallel plate is available, applied voltage is V, the distance between the plate is D, here the dielectric materials are available. So first we will see the derivation. So based on the Gauss law, the electric field intensity is given as E equal to Q divided by A epsilon. That is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. That 4 pi R square is taken as A so that it is Q divided by A epsilon. You take this equation number 1. And also in general the electric field intensity is given as V divided by D. Potential divided by distance. Right. So take this equation number 2. Right. From equation 1 and 2, so both are same, equation 1 and 2 both are electric field intensity so that we can equate this side. This side can be verified because the both are, the both expression is for the electric field intensity. So from equation 1 and 2, so V by D equal to Q by A epsilon, right. From equation 1 it is Q by A epsilon, equation 2 V by D, so both are equated. Now we substitute that Q equal to CV. You know that the general formula Q equal to CV. So that V by D equal to CV divided by A epsilon. Right. So this V V got cancelled. Right. Bring this term in the numerator. Right. So that A epsilon by D equal to C. So that can be written as C equal to A epsilon by D. That is a very general formula. C equal to A epsilon by D. Right. So that is so from the above expression, this capacitance is directly proportional to the area, area of the plate and inversely proportional to the distance between the conductors, right. So what is the meaning? If you increase the area of the plate, the capacitance will increase. Similarly, if you decrease the distance between the plate, the capacitance will increase, right. So it is A epsilon by D, the general formula. Now we will see the capacitance of parallel plate capacitor two media that is two conducting media two dielectrics right previously what we discussed is only one dielectric right. So refer this diagram so this is the parallel plate two plates are available in between the dielectric material is filled but the half of only the portion of the dielectric is epsilon R1 first dielectric with epsilon R1 we have another dielectric with epsilon R2 right the two different dielectrics are available between this parallel plate epsilon R1 the dielectric the permittivity of the first dielectric material is epsilon R1 and the second dielectric material is epsilon R2 the thickness is D1 this will be D2 right the applied voltage is V, total voltage applied across the parallel plate is V, that is the drop across the first dielectric material is V1, second one will be V2, right. So we have D1, D2, voltage is V1, V2, the permittivity will be epsilon R1 and epsilon R2, right. We will go to the derivation. So the applied voltage V equal to V1 plus V2. Right, voltage across the first dielectric material plus voltage across the second dielectric material. Right, so that is equal to V equal to we know that E equal to V by D from that V can be written as E into D. Right, so that E1 D1 plus E2 D2. 
based on the formula we know that e equal to v by d so that from that we can write v equal to e into d right now this e can be replaced as q divided by a epsilon the general formula for electric field intensity is q divided by a epsilon 1 due to e1 it is q divided by a epsilon 1 into d1 this e2 is replaced as q divided by a epsilon 2 into d2 right so the q by a is common commonly available in both the terms so they, they is taken outside so that what we have e d1 divided by epsilon 1 plus d2 divided by epsilon 2 right q by a is taken outside now we'll substitute q equal to cv right the charge the q equal to cv we will substitute here we will replace this q equal to cv so that this v we got cancelled right now we bring this term in the denominator and bring this term in the denominator so that a equal to c equal to a divided by d1 divided by epsilon 1 plus d2 divided by epsilon 2 right so now we got the expression for capacitance now this epsilon 1 is nothing but epsilon 1 can be written as epsilon naught into epsilon r1 similarly epsilon 2 is epsilon naught into epsilon r2 that is absolute permittivity and relative permittivity since this absolute permittivity is is a common this relative permittivity depends upon the material first dielectric and this one will be second dielectric right so this epsilon naught can be taken common this epsilon naught is available in both the term so one divided by epsilon naught it will go into the numerator so that a epsilon naught divided by d1 divided by epsilon r1 plus d2 divided by epsilon r2 right so this is the expression for capacitance with two different dielectric material now we'll see the problem based on this capacitor with two dielectric material right we'll see the statement a parallel plate capacitor consists of two square metal plates of side 500 mm right the area of the parallel plate is 500 mm the side the one side is 500 mm and is separated by 10 millimeter right the distance between the two plate is 10 millimeter in this the teflon teflon is available with the epsilon r equal to 2 for a thickness of 6 millimeter out of 10 millimeter 6 millimeter is available with a teflon the dielectric material called teflon with the epsilon r equal to 2 and is placed on the lower plate having a air gap of 4 millimeter so the remaining 4 millimeter will be air gap so total 10 millimeter out of 10 millimeter 6 millimeter is teflon with epsilon r equal to 2 remaining 4 millimeter will be air gap right the voltage applied is 100 voltage 100 voltage is applied we need to find capacitance displacement density electric field intensity and voltage in both teflon as well as air we need to find the all these parameter for teflon as well as air right now we'll see the given data what are the data given so the area the side is given 500 meter 500 millimeter so the area will be 500 into 500 millimeter square right side into side so millimeter square is converted into meter square it is multiplied by 10 to the power minus 6 so 500 into 500 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter square right the distance d1 thickness of the first dielectric is 6 millimeter that is 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter the thickness of the second dielectric that is air is 4 millimeter that is equal to 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter right so the epsilon r1 is given as 2 for the teflon the epsilon r1 value is given as 2 the epsilon r2 will be 1 that is air gap for air gap the value will be 1 right the applied voltage is 100 voltage then epsilon naught absolute permittivity is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 that we know that is a constant so by using this we will find the values one by one first we will find the capacitance so the capacitance with two dielectric is nothing but 
epsilon naught a divided by d1 divided by epsilon r1 plus t2 divided by epsilon r2 right now we will substitute this value epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 right what is the area 500 into 500 into 10 to the power minus 6 right so this is first dielectric right first dielectric the thickness is 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 the permittivity value is 2 second dielectric 4 millimeter 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is air so that the value will be 1 right so by simplifying this what we got 3.16 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad right so first is the we, we calculated the value capacitance value is calculated for this two dielectric material c will be 3.16 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad now we need to find the remaining values displacement density electric field and potential so before that value of charge density in plate 1 and 2 is same since the charge and area of the plate 1 and 2 are same right that means the displacement density will be equal for both the cases because the charge density in plate 1 and 2 are equal so that the area of the plate 1 and 2 also equal now we'll find the remaining value capacitance value is calculated now we'll see the displacement density that is nothing but q divided by a displacement density is nothing but q divided by a so that is q is replaced by cv divided by a q equal to cv divided by a right the displacement density is nothing but displacement per unit area so based on that q by a q is replaced by cv divided by a now we'll substitute this value c now we calculated this c value capacitor 3.16 into 10 to the power minus 10 the applied voltage will be 100 what is the area 500 into 500 10 to the power minus 6 right we will substitute all the value so it is better to take 5 to 6 decimal so that the answer will be very accurate normally if you take the 6 digit after the decimal the, yeah, the answer will be very nearer right so 0.00264 into 10 to the power minus 4 coulomb per meter square right this displacement density right we are taking six decimal and also 10 to the power minus 4 also available right so from this d value we can find e1 and e2 so e1 equal to d1 divided by epsilon naught into epsilon r1 we know the relation between d and e right so d equal to epsilon e from that e equal to d by epsilon right so the d1 d2 is there both are equal d1 d2 are equal to d so d value is 0.001264 into 10 to the power minus 4 thus we calculated divided by epsilon naught that is constant 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 epsilon r1 value is 2 right so by simplifying what we got 7138.02 voltage per meter nearly it is 7000 7138.02 voltage per meter similarly we can find the e2 value e2 equal to d2 divided by epsilon naught into epsilon r2 so the d2 also same 0.001264 into 10 to the power minus 4 that is available here divided by epsilon naught is constant 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 epsilon r2 is 1 because of air medium so by simplifying this what we got 14276.03 voltage per meter right so now we got the value of v1 and e2 from that we can find v1 and v2 so v1 equal to e1 into d1 that is e equal to v divided by d from that v equal to e into d so the e1 value we calculated e1 value is 7138.02 into the d1 the distance the first dielectric will be 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 6 millimeter so what we got 42.83 voltage similarly v2 e2 into d2 so e2 we calculated 14276.3 voltage per meter into d2 d2 is the air gap 4 millimeter 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 so by simplifying this what we got 
so v1 will be 42.83 v2 will be 57.10 so by adding these two what we got 99.93 voltage that is the applied voltage is 100 we know that applied voltage so by adding it is nearly we got 99.93 so the what the value what we got uh, calculated is almost correct it is nearer to the 100 voltage that's why we are taking the displacement density as a 5 to 6 digits right so now we calculated capacitance then displacement density e1 e2 v1 and v2 so all values are calculated now we'll go to the one more problem so in the second problem the, capa the capacitance value is given that is 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad the capacitance of a condenser formed by two parallel plate the area is 100 centimeter square and separated by 2 millimeter for this the value will be 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad right so the area of the plate is available the thickness the distance between the plate is available and the capacitor value is available the potential applied is 20 kilovolt 20 kV right we need to find the value of charge electric field intensity and relative permittivity we need to find these three values right first we will see the given data so the area is given 100 centimeter square while converting into meter square we need to multiply 10 to the power minus 4 so the area is 100 centimeter square that is equal to 100 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square the applied voltage is 20 kV 20 kV means 20 into 10 to the power 3 voltage kilo voltage means we need to multiply with 10 to the power 3 the distance distance between the plate is 2 millimeter that is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter millimeter to meter mean we need to multiply with 10 to the power minus 3 the capacitance value also given c equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad right so these are all the given data from that we can find the value values one by one first we will find the charge charge q equal to cv very standard formula q equal to cv so that c value is given 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 the voltage is 20 kilo volt 20 into 10 to the power 3 so multiplying these two what we got 40 into 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb the charge will be 40 into 10 to the power minus 7 coulomb then we will find the electric field intensity e equal to v by d these two values are available voltage available distance available so that we can use this formula right v by d so v equal to 20 kilo volt 20 into 10 to the power 3 divided by the distance is nothing but 2 millimeter 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is equal to 10 into 10 to the power 6 voltage per meter right the electric field intensity will be 10 into 10 to the power 6 voltage per meter now we need to find one more value that is permittivity relative permittivity that is from this formula we can find c equal to epsilon naught epsilon r a divided by d is a very standard formula in this c is available epsilon naught is available area available and distance also available right so cross multiply and simplify this expression so that epsilon r equal to c into d divided by a into epsilon naught right so because we need to find epsilon r so it is rearranged such a way that epsilon r equal to c into d divided by a epsilon naught now substitute the c value c is 2 into 10 to the power minus 10 the distance is 2 millimeter 2 into 10 to the power minus 3 the area is is 100 100 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square then epsilon naught value is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 now all the values are substituted by simplifying what we got 4.517 right so in this problem we calculated the charge value electric field intensity and the capacitance from this capacitance we calculated relative permittivity right so in this video we discuss about the capacitance definition derivation and two problems
Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor or cable, the derivation and the, uh, the, the derivation for this cylindrical capacitor or cable, both are equivalent, right. First we will see the diagram, so we have the cylindrical capacitor, the cylinder is available with inner and outer radius or A and B respectively, we have two cylinders are available, the radius of inner and outer uh, a cylinder is A and B. The space between this cylinder is filled with the dielectric having the permittivity of epsilon r, right. Now see this refer this diagram. So this is the inner cylinder with radius A. This is the outer cylinder with radius B, right. We have taken the 1 meter length of the cylinder, right. So, the inner cylinder radius A, outer cylinder radius B and the height of the cylinder is 1 meter. For calculation purpose, we consider one Gaussian cylindrical surface with radius rho meter. Gaussian cylindrical surface with rho, that is in between A and B. In between A and B, one imaginary Gaussian cylindrical surface is taken, that is the radius is rho meter, right. We will see this uh, description. So, it is required to determine the capacitance per meter length. First, we will find the capacitance per meter length. The total capacitance will be capacitance per meter length and multiplied by length of the capacitor. Right? That is given here. So, we consider the Gaussian cylindrical surface with radius rho meter and height 1 meter. Right? The cable acts as a cylindrical capacitor. This is the underground cable. This, right? That is equivalently we are treated as a cylindrical capacitor. Underground cable having two conductors, inner conductor as well as outer conductor in between the insulator is available. Right? So this this case this is treated as a underground cable or cylindrical capacitor. Now we will see the derivation for this cylindrical capacitor. First we will find the electric field intensity, then voltage, from that we can find the capacitance. The electric field intensity E equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. That is a very general formula, Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. That is rewritten as epsilon Q divided by epsilon into 4 pi R square. What is this 4 pi R square? This is nothing but a area of a sphere normally. The all the charges what we assumed as a spherical form, sphere, 4 pi r square. But here we are going to find the cylindrical capacitor. We are assumed that the charges available in the cylindrical capacitor. So that the area of the sphere is replaced by area of the cylinder, 2 pi r h. Area of the cylinder is 2 pi r h, right. In this, this 2 pi r is nothing but rho. We assume here cylindrical capacitor with the radius rho and the height will be 1 meter. So, h is replaced as 1. So, that it is nothing but q divided by 2, F, 2 pi epsilon into rho. The electric field intensity especially for a cylindrical capacitor will be q divided by 2 pi epsilon into rho, right. From this we can find the potential difference. So, what is the potential difference between the two cylinder is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from outer cylinder to inner cylinder, right. The unit charge is moving from outer cylinder to inner cylinder. So, that limit is from B to A that is nothing but radius of the outer cylinder to radius of the inner cylinder B to A, right. So, we know that V, V equal to potential V equal to minus integral B to A E into D rho. That is a general formula, general formula for the potential in terms of electric field, right. V equal to minus integral E dot D rho. We consider rho, uh, rho meter radius so that it is D rho, right. So, that is equal to minus integral B to A. Q is replaced as Q divided by 2 pi epsilon into rho, right, into D rho. In this Q divided by 2 pi epsilon is constant. Only we have integral. Now the negative sign is removed by interchanging the limit. Now the inter limits are interchanged. B to A is now given as A to B. So that we can remove this negative sign. 
1 divided by rho into d rho, right? q divided by 2 pi epsilon is constant, integral a to b, b to a is now changed, interchanged into a to b, so that we can remove this negative sign, 1 divided by rho into d rho, right? So, the 1 divided by rho, so q divided by 2 pi epsilon, integral 1 by rho is nothing but log rho with a limit of a to b. We need to substitute the limit a to b. So, that v equal to q divided by 2 pi epsilon into log b minus log a. So, upper limit and lower limit while well, substituting we got minus log b minus log a, right? So, what we got v equal to q divided by 2 pi epsilon log b minus log a. But what we need is capacitance. So, that substitute q equal to cv. In this equation, we are replacing q equal to cv. That is v equal to q. q is cv into divided by 2 pi epsilon log b minus log a is written as log b by a. Right? So, this v v got cancelled bring this term in the numerator, bring the log b by in the denominator, right? 2 pi epsilon is brought into numerator, log b is brought into denominator. So, 2 pi epsilon divided by log b by a equal to c, right? So, that can be written as c equal to 2 pi epsilon divided by log b by a, right? So, so that is nothing but the unit is farad per meter. Here we consider only 1 meter length of cable, so the unit is nothing but farad per meter, 2 pi epsilon divided by log b by a. Suppose if we want to find the total capacitance, here we consider only 1 meter length of cable, underground cable, if you want to find the entire length of the cable, c total equal to 2 pi epsilon log b by a into l, it is multiplied by the length of the capacitor, so that unit will be farad. Right, so it is 2 pi epsilon divided by log b by a into l, the unit is farad. So, in this video, we discuss about the cylindrical capacitor, the derivation. We got the expression for capacitance of a cylindrical capacitor. So, this is nothing but a underground cable, right? Capacitance per meter as well as total capacitance also, we got the expression. Welcome viewers, in this video, we will see the capacitance of a spherical capacitor, the derivation and one problem. So, the cylindric, the spherical capacitor is shown in the diagram, right. So, we have inner sphere and outer sphere. In between the dielectric is filled, so the radius of the inner sphere is a meter, radius of the outer sphere will be b meters, right. The charges are accumulated, positive charges and negative charges. So this inner sphere and outer sphere in between the dielectric is act as a capacitor. Now, we will see the expression for this, the cylindrical spherical capacitor. So, the description is given, the radius of inner and outer sphere are A and B respectively. The space between the two sphere are filled with a dielectric with a permittivity epsilon r. So, our aim is to find the capacitance between inner and outer sphere. So, we start with the electric field intensity, then we will go to potential, then we will find the capacitance. The electric field intensity is given by E equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square, that is the general formula. Here we can take as it is, right. So, the sphere, we consider the sphere, so E equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R, is, R square is taken. The potential is given by the relation between potential and electric field V equal to minus integral E dot dr. So, this dr is nothing but in between inner and outer sphere. We consider one radius in between inner and outer sphere. Now, we will see what is the limit for this integration. What is the limit? So, the potential difference is the work done in moving a unit positive charge from negatively charged sphere to positively charged sphere, right? Here the potential, the work done is nothing but moving a unit positive charge from negatively charged sphere to positively charged sphere. That is from, that is the 
it is from the outer sphere to inner sphere so that the limit are from b to a the radius of the outer sphere to radius of the inner sphere right so the limit is from b to a so that v equal to minus integral b to a e dot dr right now substitute the value of e e equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon r square into dr the limit is now the, in, the limit is interchanged b to a is now interchanged with a to b so that this negative become positive right so q divided by 4 pi epsilon is now constant only we have integral b a to b 1 divided by r square into dr right so q divided by 4 pi epsilon the integral 1 by r square is minus 1 by r we know very well so the integral 1 by r square is minus 1 by r substitute the limit a and b so that q divided by 4 pi epsilon so this limit minus 1 by b so while substituting lower limit already 1 minus is there we will go one more minus so it become plus 1 by a right so that can be rewritten as v equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon 1 by a minus 1 by b it is rearranged now we'll take the lcm q divided by 4 pi epsilon take this lcm a b so here b will be multiplied here a will be multiplied here so b minus a divided by a b v equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon b minus a into a b but what we need is capacitance so substitute q equal to cv replace the this q by cv so that v equal to cv divided by 4 pi epsilon b minus a divided by a b right this v v got cancelled bring this term in the numerator bring this term in the denominator so 4 pi epsilon divided by b minus a divided by a b is again go to the numerator so 4 pi epsilon a b divided by b minus a equal to c so that can be written as c equal to 4 pi epsilon a b divided by b minus a so this is the expression for spherical capacitor with radius a and b it is 4 pi epsilon a b divided by b minus a now we will see one problem in the spherical capacitor right the radius of two sphere differ by 4 centimeter the radius of inner and outer sphere is not given but the difference between inner and outer sphere is given as 4 centimeter right the capacitance of this spherical capacitor is 53.3 picofarad right the capacitance value is given 53.3 picofarad if the outer sphere is earthed calculate the radius a and b assuming air as a dielectric right so the capacitance value is given the a and b values are not given but difference between a and b will is given as 4 centimeter now we need to assume air dielectric so with this given data we need to find what is the radius of inner radius and outer radius a and b right so first we will see the given data the difference between these two is b minus a equal to 0.04 4 centimeter while converting into meter 4 into 10 to the power minus 2 that is nothing but 0 0.04 meter the capacitance value is given 53.3 picofarad that is 53.3 into 10 to the power minus 12 picofarad mean 10 to the power minus 12 farad then the epsilon naught value is constant 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 epsilon r equal to 1 because it is given as air air as a dielectric right what is the uh, expression for uh, cylindrical spherical capacitor c equal to 4 pi epsilon a b divided by a minus b just now we got this expression right so in this what we have what we need this a b because a minus b also known value so we bring this term here and bring the 4 pi epsilon in the denominator so c into a minus b divided by 4 pi epsilon equal to a b so that a b equal to c into a minus b divided by 4 pi epsilon this epsilon is given written as epsilon naught into epsilon r right now substitute all the values c is given as 53.3 into 10 to the power minus 12 into the difference between these two is 0.04 divided by 
4 pi epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12. Epsilon R value is 1. Right. So by simplify this, what we got 0 0.0192. Right. The A B value after simplification, what we got 0 0.9, 0 0.0192. But we know that B minus A equal to 0 0.04. From that, B equal to 0 0.04 plus A. Bring this A in the this side. So that B equal to 0 0.04 plus A. Right. So now A B equal to 0 0.0192. So in this, you replace this B, B equal to 0 0.04 plus A, right? This B is replaced as 0 0.04 plus A, that is equal to 0 0.0192, right? So multiply inside, A is multiplied, so 0.04A plus A square equal to 0 0.0192, right? So rearrange this so that A square minus, this term is brought here, minus 0 0.0192 plus 0 0.04A. So, we will rewriting a square plus 0.04 a, this a is available, 0.04 a minus 0.0192. So, this is a quadratic equation. The a value is 1, b value is 0.04, c value is minus 0.0192, right. So, this the expert, the, the a value can be calculated from this general formula minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac divided by 2a, right. So, this b value is nothing but, this b value is nothing but 0 0.04 minus, already one minus is there, plus or minus, b square is 0 0.04 square minus 4 into a, a value is 1, that c value is minus 0 0.0192 divided by 2a, 2 into a, a value is 1. Now, we need to simplify this expression. So, that is simplified point not point zero 0.04 plus or minus point zero 0.04 square plus point zero 0.0788, right. So, after simplification what we have minus point zero 0.04 plus point not 0.18, the square of this value and this point not 0.768 divided by 2, right. Now, the both the values are added together. 0 0.04 plus or minus 0 0.0784 square root. So, while taking the square root what we got minus 0 0.04 plus or minus 0.28 divided by 2. Now, we can divide by these two. So, 0 0.04 plus or minus 0 0.28 divided by 2 can be written as minus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.14, right. So, we can, two values are available now, minus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.14 minus 0 0.92 minus 0 0.14. So, while doing this what we got 0 0.12 and minus 0 0.16. These two values are possible either 0 0.12 or minus minus 0 0.16. The, but the value will not be negative. The value will be positive so that we can take a equal to 0 0.012 means 1 to centimeter. 0 0.02 point one two meter means 12 centimeter, b equal to 0 0.16 mean it will be 16 centimeter, right. So, a equal to 12 centimeter, b equal to 16 centimeter. See the difference between these two is nothing but 4 centimeter. So, what with the value what we calculated is correct, right. So, we calculated the radius of inner sphere and radius of outer sphere. Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the capacitance of two wire transmission line. This is the overhead transmission line having the two conductors. So, the single phase power can be transmitted through this transmission line. It is a overhead transmission line. So, by referring the diagram, we have the two conductors, conductor A and conductor B. Conductor A is positively charged and conductor B is negatively charged. Our aim is to find the capacitance between these two conductors, conductor A and B. The radius of the conductor is R meter, radius of each conductor is R meter. The center to center distance between the conductor is D meter, the center of conductor A to center of conductor B is D meter. The point P is located, we are having the point P at a distance X meter from the center of the conductor A. The point P is available at a distance x meter from the center of conductor A. 
conductor A is taken as reference conductor. Then the distance between point P and center of the conductor B is D minus X. Right? So this is this will be X, this will be D minus X. The distance between center of conductor A to outside of conductor B is D minus R. So during the limit, during the integration, we need a limit. So the limit is decided by two parameters. One is radius, radius of the conductor. Another one, this D minus R. Center of the conductor A to outside of conductor B. So this distance will decide the another limit of the integration. Right? So we have conductor A and B. Center to center distance is D meter. Radius is R meter. Point P is located at a distance X meter from the center of conductor A. The distance between point P and center of conductor B is D minus X. The point P is available. EA and EB is nothing but electric field intensity due to conductor A and conductor B. Now we are having the Gaussian cylindrical surface. We are assuming on Gaussian cylindrical surface with radius x meter. We are assuming that here one cylindrical surface is available. x meter. And the height is 1 meter. We are assuming 1 meter length of cable. Right. So the cylindrical Gaussian cylindrical surface with radius x and height 1 meter. Similarly, if you refer conductor B, we have one another Gaussian cylindrical surface with radius d minus x. Right. If you refer A, x. If you refer B, d minus x. So there are two conductors available. Right? So the total capacitance, this is a total capacitance is nothing but capacitance due to conductor A and capacitance due to conductor B. Both are connected in series. Right? So this C dash is the capacitance due to conductor A. This C dash is capacitance due to conductor B. Right? So due to both are connected in series, the total capacitance C is C dash dot C dash divided by C dash plus C dash. So that is equal to C dash dot C dash divided by 2 C dash. By adding these two, we got 2 C dash. So 1 C dash got cancelled. So the C dash divided by 2. Right? So C equal to C dash divided by 2. From that, C dash equal to 2 into C. The capacitance per conductor equal to 2 times of total capacitance. C dash equal to 2 C. So, we will find both C as well as C dash, total capacitance as well as capacitance due to the conductor, per conductor. Here the description is available. The conductor A and B are uniformly charged with plus lambda by coulomb and minus lambda by coulomb respectively. Right? Conductor A is positively charged, conductor B is negatively charged. Due to length, we are using linear charge density plus lambda and minus lambda radius of each conductor is r meter and separated by d meter we are considering the point p at a distance x meter from the reference reference is nothing but conductor a then the distance between conductor b and point p is d minus x EA and EB are the electric field intensity due to conductor A and conductor B. Now we will apply the Gauss law to find the electric field intensity due to conductor A. Right? By using Gauss law we will find. So we are having the imaginary cylindrical surface with height 1 meter and radius x meter. We consider one imaginary cylindrical surface. So, the general formula for E equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. This is the general formula. So, that can be rewrite as Q divided by epsilon 4 pi R square. Since 4 pi R square refer the sphere. Normally, we refer the charges are in the form of sphere. But here we are using cylinder. So, that this term is replaced by area of the cylinder 2 pi R H. Especially in this derivation, we are using cylinder so that this term is replaced by 2 pi rh. In this r is nothing but x, the radius is x and the height is 1 meter. So that what we got q divided by 2 pi epsilon x. So the electric field intensity for this cylindrical surface is q divided by 2 pi epsilon x. For other cases we can use this directly. right? 
because of cylinder it is replaced by this value q divided by 2 pi epsilon x now we have the two electric field available so the total electric field equal to ea plus eb electric field due to conductor a plus electric field due to conductor b so that is q divided by 2 pi epsilon x that's available here while referring conductor b q divided by 2 pi epsilon d minus x because the conductor b and the distance between the conductor b and point p is d minus x right so conductor a located at a distance x meter conductor b located at a distance d minus x now this q divided by 2 pi epsilon is constant constant between these two common commonly available between these two we can take outside so what we got q divided by 2 pi epsilon 1 by x plus 1 by d minus x right now we got the expression for electric field from that we will go to potential from the potential we can find the capacitance then what is the relation between the electric field and potential e equal to minus dv by dx so that dv equal to minus e into dx from that by integrating on both sides v equal to minus integral e dot dx this is a standard formula v equal to minus integral e dot dx from that we can find the expression for potential now we will see what is the limit for this integration so the potential difference between a and b is defined as work done in moving a positive charge from b to a right so the potential difference is nothing but work done for the what is work done moving a positive charge from b to a so the electric field lies between the surface of conductor a and b that is d minus r to r right the distance between the conductor outside d minus r and radius of the conductor r that will decide the limit for this integration so we are using the limit d minus r to r so that v equal to minus the substitute the limit d minus r to r q divided by 2 pi epsilon into 1 by x plus 1 by d minus x into dx now this limits are substituted and e value is substituted so this q divided by 2 pi epsilon is constant that is taken outside minus q divided by 2 pi epsilon integral d minus r to r 1 by x plus 1 by d minus x into dx now we can go for simplifying the uh, this integration so while simplifying q divided by 2 pi epsilon is there so the 1 by x integral 1 by x is log x similarly 1 by d minus x is log d minus x but here minus x is available again we need to differentiate differentiating minus x is minus 1 if it is d plus x no problem d minus x is there we are we are integrating with respect to x so we need to take the differentiation of minus x again so that that will give minus 1 right with a limit d minus r to r so integral 1 by x is log x integral 1 by d minus x is log d minus x but here minus x is available by differentiating this minus x we are getting minus 1 right now we can substitute the limit q divided by minus q divided by 2 pi epsilon log x so this minus 1 become this minus negative minus log d minus x d minus r to r right the, the term become minus now we'll substitute the limit one by one minus q divided by 2 pi epsilon we substitute this limits log r minus log d minus r first the upper limit is substituted log r minus log d minus r then substitute the lower limit minus while substituting lower limit we got minus minus log d minus r here already one minus is there so it become plus log d minus this x x is nothing but minus log d minus of d minus r right this x is replaced by d minus r right so log r minus log d minus r upper limit log d minus r plus log d of d minus r this lower limit right this negative is there so that it become positive now we can go for further simplification 
so log r minus log d minus r minus log d minus r plus log you can multiply inside d minus minus d plus r d minus d plus r while multiplying this negative inside what will happen it become minus d the already one minus is there so it become plus r so this d d got cancel right now what we got log r minus log d minus r minus log d minus r into this plus log r right see this this log r available two times log d minus r, r also available two times so we can we can add add these two values so 2 log r minus 2 log d minus r right now we can take this two outside right already one two is there so got cancel log r minus log d minus r right so that what is there q divided by pi epsilon log d minus r by r log r right so the negative available outside that is multiplied inside so that these two values are interchange this become negative this become positive so that log d minus r minus log r right what is log d minus r minus log r that is nothing but log d minus r by r log a minus log b is nothing but log a by b by using that we can find this so that finally what we got q equal v equal to q divided by pi epsilon log d minus r by r right now we got the expression for the potential but our aim is to find the capacitance capacitance between the conductors right okay so that we are substituting q equal to cv we are replacing q by cv so then v equal to this q is there q is replaced by cv divided by pi epsilon log d minus r by r so this v v got cancelled right so bring this term in the numerator bring this term in the denominator so that c equal to pi epsilon divided by log d minus r by r right so this term is brought into numerator this term is brought into denominator that is equal to c right so what we got c equal to pi epsilon log d minus r by r the final expression what is the unit farad per meter yeah because we consider only one meter length of cable so that the unit is farad per meter pi epsilon divided by log d minus r by r so this is the total capacitance what is the capacitance per conductor c dash equal to two times of c two times of total capacitance capacitance per conductor so that is c dash equal to two times two times of this c right two into c two pi epsilon divided by log d minus r by r right so this is the capacitance due to conductor single conductor so that unit is farad per meter per conductor only one conductor here we are c dash refers only one conductor right so 2 pi epsilon log d minus r by r farad per meter per conductor right so this is total capacitance this will be capacitance due to single conductor in both the cases we assume one meter length of cable right now we got the expression for total capacitance as well as capacitance due to single conductor now we'll solve two problem first we'll go to the first problem right in this first problem calculate the capacitive reactance xc of a single phase 50 hertz transmission line of 100 kilometer with the two parallel lines of 1 centimeter diameter wire with 3 meter diameter apart in free space right so we need to find the capacitive reactance for a single phase transmission line the frequency is 50 hertz the length is 100 kilometer that is 100 into 10 to the power 3 meter the distance between the conductor is 3 meter the diameter is 1 centimeter so that radius equal to 0.5 centimeter that is 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 that is 0 0.005 meter right now these are the data available frequency available length of the conductor available distance between the conductor available diameter thereby radius available 
epsilon naught is nothing but 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 right that value also available now we'll find the capacitive reactance if you want the capacitive reactant formula is 1 divided by 2 pi fc is a formula here f is already available 50 hertz but c value is not given so first we will find the c value if we after calculating c value we can calculate the capacitive reactance right what is c value by epsilon naught epsilon r divided by log d minus r by r just now we got this derivation this is a total capacitance c pi epsilon naught so the pi into epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 epsilon r is 1 we are assuming that it is a r divided by log d minus r d is distance distance between the conductor is 3 meter minus radius is 0 0.005 meter divided by 0 0.005 right so this is a natural log base e you have to consider the base e not a base 10 it's a natural log into 100 kilometer you have to multiply with the length of the conductor right 100 kilometer so 100 into 10 to the power 3 so now all the values are substituted the final c value is 0.434 into 10 to the power minus 6 farad now we got the value of capacitance from that we can find by using this capacitance this formula we can find the capacitive reactance so the capacitive reactance x is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi fc that is equal to 1 divided by 2 into pi into the frequency is 50 hertz the capacitor value is 0.434 into 10 to the power minus 6 right after simplifying what we got the capacitive reactant x equal to 7.334 kilo ohm because of the reactance it is given as ohm kilo ohm right that is 10 to the power 3 7.334 kilo ohm right so for calculating capacitive reactants we first calculated the capacitance from that we calculated the capacitive reactants now we'll go to the one more problem two parallel long conductor have provided a capacitance of 20 picofarad the capacitance value is given this is also two wire transmission line the capacitance value is 20 picofarad the center to center distance between the conductor is one centimeter the center to center distance also given one centimeter what is the question what size of conductor what size of the wire should be used when epsilon r equal to 1 right what is size mean radius we need to find the radius of the conductor when epsilon r equal to 1 first division in the second division what size of wire should be used if it is placed in a sea water through the uh, transmission line is placed in a sea water in that case epsilon r equal to 2 right so first case epsilon r equal to 1 second case c water that is epsilon r equal to 2 right so first we will write the data so we are having the capacitance value 20 picofarad 20 picofarad means 20 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad the center to center distance is available 1 centimeter means 1 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter that is 0 0.001 meter right 0 0.001 one meter then epsilon naught is constant 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 so these are all the data available first we will consider the first case epsilon r equal to 1 right what is the kappa what is the formula c equal to pi epsilon naught epsilon r divided by log d minus r by r so just now we got the derivation capacitance of a two wire transmission line so this r is the question we need to find what is the size of the wire size of the wire means radius of the wire other data are available capacitor is available 20 into 10 to the power minus 12 farad right this is not uh, 2 is 20 20 into 10 to the power minus 12 by epsilon naught is 8.854 the epsilon r is 1 divided by log d minus r 0 0.01 minus r by r right
So now this R value we need to find. Bring this term here and bring this 20 into 10 to the power minus 12 in the denominator. So log 0 0.01 minus R by R equal to this value divided by 20 into 10 to the power minus 12 because this value is not known. We need to find. So by simplifying this, what we got 1.39. So the log to the base E 0 0.01 minus R by R equal to 1.39, right? Then how will you find the radius from this from this expression? What is the how how to find that? So here one example is available. Log base E A equal to X means that can be rewrite as you have to interchange these two values E power X equal to A. That is we are removing the log, right? For how to remove this log, we need to interchange these two values. e power x equal to a. So that we can remove the log value. e power x equal to a. Like that, you have to bring this value here. e power 1.39. Bring this value here. 0 0.01 minus r by r. Right? So based on this formula, based on this formula, interchanging these two will remove the log. Here we are doing the same we are using the same formula e power 1.39 equal to 0 0.01 minus r by r right so e power 1.39 is 4.014 that is equal to 0 0.01 minus r by r now cross multiply this 4.014 r equal to 0 0.01 minus r right bring this r that side so that 4.014 r plus r equal to 0 0.01 so these two are added 5.014 r equal to 0 0.01 so r equal to 0 0.01 divided by 5.014 from that we calculated r equal to 1.994 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter that is r equal to 2 millimeter right r equal to by using this we can find r equal to 2 millimeter so first case the radius of the conductor size of the conductor is 2 millimeter now we'll go to the second condition epsilon r equal to 2 same problem only we need to find uh, substitute epsilon r equal to, to c water c equal to pi epsilon naught epsilon r divided by log to the base e d minus r by r the c value is substituted epsilon naught is substituted pi the epsilon r equal to 2 log to the base 0 0.01 minus r by r right this value is not known so bring so exchange these two values bring this value in the numerator bring this value in the denominator so that log 0 0.01 minus r by r equal to this value right now we can simplify this so while simplifying what we got 2.78 log 0 0.01 minus r by r equal to 2.78 so based on the previous value we can interchange these two e power 2.78 equal to 0 0.01 minus r by r right so the value of e power 2.78 is 16.119 that is equal to 0 0.01 minus r by r right now multiply this r in the numerator so 16.119 119 r equal to 0 0.01 minus r bring this minus r in the left hand side so that 16.119 r plus r equal to 0 0.01 so 17.119 r equal to 0 0.01 so that r equal to 0 0.01 divided by 17.119 right so by simplify this what we got 0.000584 meter that can be written as 0.584 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter right so for epsilon r equal to 2 we got the value of r that is the size of the conductor is 0.584 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter welcome viewers in this video we'll see the potential due to dipole and electric field intensity due to dipole first we'll see what is mean by dipole so the dipole is nothing but combination of two equal and opposite charges separated by a small distance is called a dipole two equal and opposite charges placed at a particular distance that combination is nothing but a dipole 
then dipole moment it is defined as the product of charge and distance between the charge q into l dipole moment is nothing but product of charge and the distance q into l the dipole moment vector is directed from negative charge to the positive charge so it is it is directed from negative charge to positive charge we will refer the diagram now we'll see the potential due to dipole right so this is one positive charge is available and one negative charge is available one positive charge and negative charge so this combination separated by the distance l so this combination is nothing but a dipole positive charge negative charge separated by a distance l is nothing but a dipole for this dipole we are going to find what is the potential at this point p we are going to find the potential at this point p due to this dipole so the distance between this point p and positive charge is r1 the distance between point p and negative charge is r2 the center exactly at the center this so that it is l by 2 and l by 2 that distance is r meter so r1 r r2 positive charge r1 negative charge r2 at the center r this angle is delta so we assume that this length is very less and this point p is located very far away the length is very very less the point p is located very far away from this dipole by based on these two condition this delta is negligible we can neglect the delta so that these three line become the parallel lines like this r2 r r1 right so this delta we are neglecting why we are neglecting the distance between dipole and point p is very far away and the length is very very less based on the two condition the delta is neglected so that these three line become the parallel lines so the r1 is a shorter r2 is length lengthier than r1 r2 is lengthier than r by seeing the diagram we can easily identify r2 is the lengthier then r is shorter then r1 is shorter than r so these three lines are differ by this distance so this one line is drawn right so the difference between these r and r2 is differ by this distance similarly the distance between the differ between r and r1 and r2 is this distance so each and every line is differ by this distance so we need this value for the calculation purpose we need this value so that is taken as x this value will be l by 2 we'll take this is angle theta right so based on the assumption these three lines are parallel lines but each line shorter by particular distance that distance is indicated here is x this length will be l by 2 this will be angle theta so this triangle is drawn separately this x l by 2 theta right this triangle is drawn separately so what we need is this x value so by by finding the value of cos cos theta cos theta equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse adjacent side is x divided by hypotenuse l by 2 we multiply the multiply here so l by 2 cos theta equal to x so that x equal to l by 2 cos theta so this distance differ by each line the expression for this the distance differ is l by 2 cos theta from this triangle by finding the cos theta we calculated we found the expression for the unknown parameter x equal to l by 2 cos theta so that this distance will be l by 2 cos theta this distance will be l by 2 cos theta right so i will explain again this is positive charge negative charge the separated by distance l is this combination is dipole we are going to find the potential at point p which is at a distance r1 from positive charge r2 from negative charge r from the center we assume that the length is very less this distance is very large so that delta is neglected 
the, these three lines become the parallel lines based on the assumption. But each line differ by particular distance that is indicated here. This line indicate this is a differ. This can be calculated from this triangle by finding cos theta. We calculated, we found that L by 2 cos theta, L by 2 cos theta. From this, we can easily identify that this R1 is nothing but R minus L by 2 cos theta. At one expression, we need that. Similarly, R2 is nothing but R plus L by 2 cos theta. This R2 is nothing but R1 and R2 is written in terms of R, right? So, R2 equal to R plus L by 2 cos theta. R1 equal to R minus L by 2 cos theta. From R, if we subtract L by 2 cos theta, we will get R1. R plus L by 2 cos theta will give R2, right? At the time of the derivation, we can refer this value. Now we need to consider the spherical coordinate system for, for finding the potential due to dipole we are considering spherical coordinate system. So the description is given potential at point P is the sum of potential due to positive and negative charge right the total potential is sum of potential due to positive charge and potential due to negative charge. The distance between the charge is very less. We assume the distance is very less. At the same time, the R is few meter away from the di dipole. This is very large. So due to this, the angle is approximately equal to zero since R is very much greater than L. L is very less, R is more. So if L is neglected, R1, R, R2 become parallel lines. After approximation, the distances are shown already we saw the diagram the lines become parallel lines now we'll go to the derivation so the total potential equal to potential due to positive charge and potential due to negative charge v1 plus v2 so the expression for v is q divided by 4 pi epsilon r but uh, positive charge is placed at a distance r1 so q divided by 4 pi epsilon r1 then v2 is a negative charge minus q divided by 4 pi epsilon r2 negative charge is placed at at a distance r2 positive charge placed at r1 negative charge placed at a distance r2 this is negative due to negative charge so q divided by 4 pi epsilon is common so that is taken outside so what we have 1 divided by r1 minus 1 divided by r2 right now we take the LCM, so Q divided by 4 pi epsilon, R1, R2 is taken LCM, here R1 is available, so multiply with R2, here R2 is available, so multiply with R1, so R2 minus R1 divided by R1 into R2, right, so positive charge, potential due to positive charge, potential due to negative charge, after simplification we got this value, we got this expression, take this is equation number 1. Now we will go to the approximation diagram. What is approximation diagram? The three lines become parallel lines due to the distance. So R2 is nothing but R plus L by 2 cos theta. R1 equal to R minus L by 2 cos theta. That is why we already discussed. So clearly we can you can easily identify from this diagram R2 is nothing but R plus L by 2 cos theta. R1 equal to R from R is lengthier. From R if you subtract L by 2 cos theta you will get R1. Right. So that is written here. R2 equal to R plus L by 2 cos theta. R1 equal to R minus L by 2 cos theta. Now we will find these two values R2 minus R1 and R1 into R2. R2 minus R1 equal to R2 is R plus L by 2 cos theta minus R1 is R minus L by 2 cos theta. R minus already here minus is there, here also minus is there, so it become plus, plus L by 2 cos theta. So this R or God cancel, L by 2 cos theta plus L by 2 cos theta means L cos theta. This is half, this is half, so it become 1, L by 2 
sorry l cos theta r2 minus r1 is l cos theta now we'll find the value of r1 and r2 r1 into r2 equal to what is r1 r minus l by 2 cos theta r2 is r plus l by 2 cos theta so this is nothing but a minus b into a plus b what is a minus b into a plus b a square minus b square so the a is r so r square minus b is l by 2 cos theta so l square by 4 cos square theta a square plus a square minus b square we already assumed that the length is very very less so l square means very very less l square by 4 means very very less so we can neglect this term l square by 4 cos theta so that r1 and r2 equal to r square only r square will be available right now we can substitute the r1 r2 and r2 minus r1 in equation number 1 so this is equation number 1 So v equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon r2 minus r1 is l cos theta r1 into r2 is r square right now we substituted all the value so v equal to q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r square so this is the potential due to the dipole we got q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r square Now we will see the electric field intensity due to dipole. We got the expression for potential due to dipole. V equal to Q L cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon R square. The expression for potential is available. How will you find the electric field from potential? What is the relation between this potential and electric field? E equal to minus del V. Right. So by using the this relation, the V is available. So by finding the del v we can calculate we can find the expression for electric field intensity right what is del operator here we assume that spherical coordinate system spherical coordinate system means r theta and pi r theta pi normal rectangular coordinate means x y z here we consider spherical coordinate so that r theta and pi so that is del operator is nothing but a partial differentiation dou by dou r into a r vector 1 by r dou by dou theta into a theta vector 1 by r sin theta into dou by dou pi so this is the del operator for spherical coordinate system r theta pi then v is nothing but q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r square q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r square now we will multiply this this expression for v inside so dou by dou r into this value q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r square into a r 1 by r dou by dou, dou theta into this expression for v similarly 1 divided by r sin theta dou by dou pi of this value now we need to differentiate this expression with respect to r we need to differentiate with this expression with respect to theta differentiate with we need to differentiate this expression with respect to pi partial differentiation differentiation with respect to r theta and pi now we'll go for the differentiation So here q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon is constant only what we have 1 by r square 1 by r square is the we need to differentiate only 1 by r square other terms are constant that is the concept of partial differentiation so differentiation of 1 by r square is minus 2 by r cube you know that 1 divided by r square differentiation of 1 divided by r square is minus 2 by r cube plus 1 by r this q l divided by 4 pi epsilon r square is constant only we need to differentiate cos theta q l divided by 4 pi epsilon r square is constant already 1 by r is available right only we need to differentiate with respect to theta cos theta 
differentiation of cos theta is minus sin theta right okay for the third term differentiation with respect to pi but the pi parameter is not available here so it become zero all are constant it become zero right so here we differentiated 1 by r square that is minus 2 by r cube here we differentiated cos theta that is minus sin theta now we'll go for the simplification so it is minus 2 ql cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r cube into ar vector here minus is there minus ql sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon here r is there here r square is there so r cube into a theta a theta cap right so already one minus available outside so i will multiply inside both become positive q 2 q l cos theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r cube into a r vector plus q l sin theta divided by 4 pi epsilon r cube into a theta right so this q l divided by 4 pi epsilon r square is common that is taken outside so that 2 cos theta a r cap plus sin theta a theta cap so this is the final expression for electric field intensity due to the dipole right so first we we discuss about the what is mean by dipole dipole moment then potential due to dipole from the potential due to dipole we calculated the we found the expression for electric field intensity due to dipole Welcome viewers, in this video, we will see the dielectric boundary conditions. There are two boundary conditions available, we will see one by one. What is mean by dielectric boundary? There are two dielectrics are combined together. The line joining these two dielectrics nothing but a boundary. So, what is the, what happen in this boundary? So, when the flux line flowing through a single medium, they are continuous. So, for example, if the flux is flowing through a single medium, single dielectric means it will be continuous. There is no disturbance. When they flow through a boundary formed by two different types of dielectric, they got refracted. Suppose if the flux line is flowing from one dielectric material to another dielectric material, there may be a chances of reflection both in magnitude as well as angle. So, this can be studied by using boundary condition. So, that we are going to whether there is any change in the flow of flux in magnitude and angle that we are going to study in this boundary condition. So, the surface of glass board, one glass board is available. So, this glass board and air is a glass air boundary because air is also a one of the dielectric material, it is available everywhere. So, if you consider the glass board, on the surface of the glass board is one boundary, over that air is available, that is another boundary, that is another dielectric. So, the surface of this glass board is a glass air boundary. Now, we will see this boundary condition, first boundary condition. So, the when the flux lines flowing from one dielectric to another dielectric, what will happen if there is any change in the flux both in magnitude and angle that we are going to study in this boundary conditions. First we will see the first boundary condition. This first boundary condition consider a boundary formed by two dielectric as shown in the diagram. By referring this diagram, this line is nothing but a boundary. This line is the boundary. So below that we have dielectric material 1. Above that we have dielectric material 2. This is dielectric material 1, this is dielectric material 2. Both are combined together. That line is nothing but a boundary between first dielectric and second dielectric. We placed one box such that it encloses both the media. It covers both dielectric 2 as well as dielectric 1. The box is placed such that it covers both the media. Half is available at boundary 2, available to dielectric 2, half available in dielectric 1. Here what we are going to see, the displacement density, normal component of displacement density. This is the normal component of displacement density entering, entering into the box. 
that is in the boundary that is in the dialectic material 1 but it is leaving at dn2 normal component of displacement density vector leaving this box at second magnet second dialectic material right entering in first dialectic material leaving in the second dialectic material so that we will analyze whether both are equal if there is any change in dn1 and dn2 that is our analysis so because is enter at first dielectric leaves at second dielectric the surface area of the box is delta s the height is delta h right the height is delta h the surface area is delta s so at this boundary what we have charged sheet with density sigma coulomb per meter square so we placed one charged sheet is available one charged sheet is placed at the boundary sigma coulomb per meter square so due to that we will see what will happen in this whether, whether both are equal or any changes is available so this description is given consider a box at the boundary such that it encloses both the media so this is the angles are given this theta one is angle of incidence entering theta 2 is the angle of emergence emergence means leaving d1 d2 means normal component this is the uh, flux uh, displacement density dn1 means normal component right now we are going to apply the gas law to the box gas law what is gas law normal component of flux coming out of the charged body is equal to amount of charge enclosed right flux is equal to charge pi equal to q now we need to identify what is the flux available here what is the charge available here then we can apply the ampere's law from that we can find the relation first we will find the flux what is the flux what is the flux entering the box we have dn1 is available normal component of flux density is entering then what is flux d equal to pi by x displacement equal to charge per unit area so from that we cross multiply this pi equal to ds so the flux equal to displacement density into surface area what is given d in the diagram is displacement density vector not a displacement displacement density vector from displacement density vector we can find the flux using this formula pi equal to ds so that flux entering the box is dn1 into dx dn1 is normal component of flux density flux means dn1 into ds similarly what is the flux leaving the box dn2 into ds right dn1 into ds is the flux entering dn2 into ds is the flux leaving then what is the charge enclosed by the box we have sigma is available charge received sigma is placed at the boundary what is sigma q divided by s charge per unit area we cross multiply this so that q equal to sigma into s charge equal to charge density into area q equal to sigma into s so that sigma into delta s what we have delta s right so this is flux entering this is flux leaving this is the charge available so what is the gas law is given by gas law net flux is equal to the charge enclosed what is net flux net flux mean difference between these two dn1 minus delta s minus dn2 delta s equal to sigma into delta s this is the net flux flux entering minus flux leaving equal to charge so the delta s is commonly available we can cancel the delta s so dn1 equal minus dn2 equal to sigma so what we got this dn1 and dn2 are not equal that is depends upon the charge so if any charge is available at the boundary the fluxes density vectors are not equal it will differ that is the relation we have right so that is given here normal component of flux density vector is discontinuous by a amount of charge density of the sheet right they are not continuous what is the flux entering is not flux leaving there will be some discontinuous available why due to the charge density suppose if the charged sheet is not present at the boundary right 
we we assume that the charge receipt is available now if the charge receipt is not available what will happen the sigma equal to 0 so that this value is 0 so dn1 minus dn2 equal to 0 so bring that term in the right hand side so that dn1 equal to dn2 now both are equal flux density of xr equal when the charge is not available so if the charge is not available both are equal so the flux line flowing from one boundary to one dielectric to another dielectric will be continuous if there is no charges are available if any charge is available they will, it will be discontinuous that is the conclusion we got if the charge is not available they are all equal right now it is given the statement is given normal component of flux density vectors are equal they are continuous at the boundary provided there is no charged sheet at the boundary right how it how they become continuous only there is no charged sheet at the boundary right from vector diagram we can write this relation d1 cos theta equal to d2 cos theta 2 from the vector diagram we can write this Now we will see the second boundary condition. Second boundary condition is dealing about tangential component of electric field. First, uh, first boundary condition, normal component of displacement density. Now we are going with tangential component of a electric field, right? They refer this diagram. So this is the first dielectric material, this will be second dielectric material. This line is nothing but a boundary between first dielectric and second dielectric, 1 and 2. We play, we have one closed path, rectangular path, A, B, C, D, A, such that it encloses both the dielectric. A, B available in dielectric 2, C, D available in dielectric 1. So it covers both the dielectric. The height is delta H, length is delta L. So in this AB what we have ET1, tangential component of electric field intensity ET1. In CD, ET2. See the direction, both are opposite. So this is negative. And the, see the vector diagram. This is tangential component, this will be normal. Electric field intensity E1 and E2. This is angle of incidence. Theta 2 is angle of emergence. So that is given here. E1 and E2 are electric field intensity in media 1 and 2. ET1 and ET2 are the tangential component of electric field intensity in media 1 and 2. Now we need to verify whether both are equal. ET1 and ET2 are equal. Another thing, there is no charged sheet available. In first boundary condition, we placed one charged sheet. Now we are not placed any charged sheet here. Now we will go to this. Consider a rectangular path A, B, C, D, A at the boundary such that it encloses both the media. Right? Static electric field is a conservative field. What is the mean by conservative field? Net field is 0. That is integral E dot DL equal to 0. If any closed path is there, the total electric field intensity will be 0. Now we can apply this to the closed path A, B, C, D, A. We can apply this, this condition for A, B, C, D, A. So apply this equation to the loop A, B, C, D, A with delta H equal to 0. We assume that the delta H is approaching to 0. So integral E dot DL equal to 0 for a closed path A, B, C, D, A. So that is written in four parts, A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A. That is equal to zero. What is the electric field intensity in A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A? Now refer the diagram. The electric field intensity A, B is E, T1 into delta L. C, D is E, T2 into delta L. What about B, C and D, A? This delta H is approaching to zero. So the value is 0 here because height is we are approaching your height assuming your height height is 0 so we have et1 into delta l here minus et2 into delta l so that is available here 
as delta h is approaching to 0, second and fourth terms are tends to 0. The first term a b is e t 1 into delta l, then third term is minus e t 2 into delta l that is equal to 0. So, you bring this term right hand side. So, e t 1 delta l equal to e t 2 into delta l. This delta l got cancelled. So, e t 1 equal to e t 2. So, tangential component of electric field intensity, the first dielectric, second dielectric both are equal. Directly we got this relation. Why? Because there is no charge receipt. We are not placed any charge receipt. So, stately we got both are equal. So, that is given here. Tangential component of a electric field intensity vectors are equal. We are not having any condition. Directly we got that both are equal. From vector diagram we can write E1 sin theta 1 equal to E2 sin theta 2. E1 sin theta 1 equal to E2 sin theta 2. Similarly, we got from first boundary condition also. First boundary condition D1 cos theta equal to D2 cos theta 2. Second boundary condition E1 sin theta 1 equal to E2 sin theta 2. This one displacement density, this one electric field intensity, right? For equation 2 by 1, you give E1 sin theta 1 divided by D1 cos theta 1 equal to E2 sin theta 2 divided by D2 cos theta 2. Right? So, that E1 divided by D1 sin theta 1 by cos theta 1 is tan theta 1. Sin theta 2 by cos theta 2 equal to tan theta 2. Now, we will sub substitute this. D equal to epsilon E. The relation is available. So, that D1 equal to epsilon naught epsilon R1 into E1. Similarly, D2 equal to epsilon naught epsilon R2 into D2 into E2. Now, we will substitute this E1 tan theta 1 divided by D1 is replaced by epsilon naught epsilon R1 E1. Then D2 by E2 into tan theta, this D2 is re replaced by epsilon naught epsilon R2 into E2. Right? So, this epsilon naught is available in both that got cancelled. This E1 is available that got cancelled. This epsilon R1 is available, epsilon R1 and R2. So, tan theta 1 divided by epsilon R1 equal to tan theta divided by epsilon R2. Right? The E1 and epsilon naught 1 got cancelled. So, from this relation we can write tan theta 1 divided by tan theta 2 equal to epsilon R1 by epsilon R2. So, by using this relation we can find the parameter. Suppose theta 1, theta 2, epsilon R1 is known mean we can find epsilon R2. By using three parameters the fourth parameter can be calculated. Right? So, in this we discuss about dielectric boundary condition. There are two boundary conditions available. First boundary condition deals with normal component of displacement density vector. Second boundary condition tangential component of electric field intensity. Uh, finally, we got this relation also that can be used to measure the parameters. Welcome viewers. In this video, we will see the energy stored in capacitor, energy density of the capacitor and the problem. First, we will see energy stored in capacitor. So, the parallel plate capacitor is shown in diagram. At one plate, positive charge is available. At another plate, negative charge is available. The voltage is applied between the two plates. Right? The voltage is applied. What will happen? The voltage across the capacitor is V. The voltage will be developed. In the closed loop, the voltage across the capacitor will oppose the supply voltage. So, we are giving the supply voltage V so that the voltage is developed across the plate. That voltage will oppose the supply voltage. Right? The voltage across the capacitor parallel plate will apply, op oppose the supply voltage. The work done by the source against the opposition of V is converted into energy. So, there is a opposition between parallel plate voltage and supply voltage. So, that will be now converted into energy. Right? So, the we know that potential is the work done per charge. So, what is the potential? V equal to dW, dw divided by dQ. 
the potential equal to work done per unit charge from that dw equal to v into q cross multiply these two so the dw equal to v into dq but we know that q equal to cv from that v equal to q by c we will replace this v as q by c so dw equal to q by c into dq so this work done is due to only small charge so by integrating on both the side we will get the total charge dw equal to q dq divided by c so we have one parallel plate capacitor voltage is applied then the voltage will be developed across the parallel plate that voltage will oppose the supply voltage that is now converted into energy that is nothing but dw divided by dq work done by charge so after simplification we got this value this is only small charge and small work done by integrating on both the side with a limit we will get the total work done total energy stored if the capacitor is initially uncharged and the process of charging continue until the charge Q is reached that is the capacitor is charged from 0 to Q initially uncharged and then it is charged to Q then the total work done will be so we can integrate this both the side with a limit 0 to Q because the capacitor is charging from 0 to Q Now see this integral dw equal to integral 0 to q q dq divided by c now it is integrated on both the side the limit is applied so integral dw equal to w 1 by c is constant so integral 0 to q q into dq so w equal to 1 by c the integral q is nothing but q square by 2 we need to substitute the limit 0 to q so what will happen 1 by c into q square by 2 so that q square divided by 2c the energy stored in the capacitor is q square divided by 2c by substituting this limit q is replaced the small q is replaced by capital q so that q square divided by 2c you take this equation number one this is one formula energy stored in capacitor one formula q square divided by 2c we'll see another two formulas We know that Q equal to CV. Now we are going to substitute Q equal to CV in the equation number 1. So that what is that W square W equal to Q square divided by 2C. That is Q square mean C square V square divided by 2C. Right? This Q square is now replaced by C square and V square. So 1C got cancelled. So what we have C V square divided by so that is nothing but half cv square energy stored in capacitor another formula is half cv square this is a very standard formula half into capacitance plus voltage square half cv square this is second form is available now we'll go to the third form same thing q equal to cv from that c equal to q by v we are going to substitute in the equation 1 c we are going to replace the c value by q by v here we replace the q value by cv this q is replaced here in this third form the c is replaced by q v right so what we have q square divided by 2 c so that q square divided by 2 into c is nothing but q by v so 1 q q q square is there here q is there 1 q got cancelled this v is available in the denominator it will go to numerator so q v divided by 2 that is half q v that is the third form right so we have three different formula available according to the data we can use any of this formula for the energy stored in capacitor q square divided by 2 c or half c v square or half q v three different formula available based on the data we can use either any one of this formula now we'll see the energy density 
what is energy density energy density is defined as the energy stored per unit volume so always density mean either length area or volume we are referring here we are referring the volume energy stored per unit volume is nothing but energy density right so the energy stored in the capacitor just now we we discussed the energy stored in capacitor three different form available we consider the one form half cv square we will take this form half cv square so this energy stored by volume is nothing but energy density so first we started with the expression half cv square but we know we know that the capacitance is nothing but a epsilon by d area into epsilon divided by distance right now substitute the c replace this c by this value a epsilon by d so half a epsilon by d into v square for in order to get the volume multiply and divide by the term length so it will not the originality will not affect multiply and divide by the term length right now we rewrite this 1 by 2 epsilon v square this epsilon v square right a into l divided by d into l right so this l is written here this l is multiplied with a right so half epsilon v square divided by dl into a into l right this l is available here this l is available with multiplication of area what is area into length area into length is nothing but volume area mean two parameter length and breadth or length and height or breadth and height so breadth height into length three parameter this is two parameter this is third parameter if three parameter if you multiply that is volume so what we have energy stored equal to half epsilon v square divided by dl into volume right now bring this term volume in the denominator energy stored in the denominator so energy stored by volume equal to half epsilon v square divided by dl right this volume is brought into denominator of left hand side so what is this energy stored by volume energy stored by volume is nothing but energy density that is half epsilon v square divided by dl right now we got the expression for energy density that is half epsilon v square divided by dl so based on this energy stored and energy density we will see one problem so we have parallel plate capacitor with the two parallel square plate of area 50 centimeter into 50 centimeter right the area is 50 centimeter into 50 centimeter that is 50 into 50 10 to the power minus 4 meter square by converting centimeter to meter we need to multiply 10 to the power minus 2 here two times available so that 10 to the power minus 4 meter square right so the area is given separated at a distance 1 millimeter the distance between the plate is 1 millimeter that is 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter it is charged with 500 voltage the voltage will be 500 then what is what we need to find work done in separating the plate from 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter right the the distance between the plate is separated from 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter so that we'll take d1 as 1 millimeter d2 as 3 millimeter right so 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 the epsilon naught is constant 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 then epsilon r equal to 1 we consider air medium what we need to find work done what is work done half cv square the v is already available but c value is not available how will you find the c value by using this by using this data we can find we will take this c1 and c2 if it is 1 millimeter c1 if it is 3 millimeter c2 so that is available here c1 and c2 from c1 and c2 we will find the work done wd1 and wd2 from that we can find the net work done right so we have the distance is 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter so first we consider 1 millimeter we can calculate c1 value then we'll consider 3 millimeter we can calculate c2 value 
right so that c1 c2 using 1 millimeter this will be using 3 millimeter so a epsilon naught epsilon r divided by d1 1 millimeter so area is 50 into 50 10 to the power minus 4 epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by this distance 1 into 10 to the power minus 3 so c1 equal to 2.21 into 10 to the power minus 9 farad by simplifying this we got this value so when the distance between the plate is 1 millimeter this is the capacitance value when it is 3 millimeter it will be c2 a epsilon naught epsilon naught divided by d2 the area is 50 into 50 10 to the power minus 4 epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 the d2 value is now 3 millimeter 3 into 10 to the power minus 3 by simplifying what we got 7.37 into 10 to the power minus 10 farad right now we got the c1 value and c2 value by using this we can find what is the work done for c1 what is the work done for c2 the difference between those two that two will be the network done right so we will find this work done now so the work done wd1 equal to half c1 v square voltage is common only c1 is there so half into c1 we calculated 2.21 into 10 to the power minus 9 the voltage is 500 voltage 500 square that is equal to by simplifying this 2.76 into 10 to the power minus 4 joule right when the distance is 1 millimeter this is the capacitance value this is the work done when the capacitance is c2 half c2 v square when it is 3 millimeter the capacitance value will be c2 for that the work done will be half c2 v square half into c2 is 7.37 into 10 to the power minus 10 into 500 square v square is 500 square by simplifying what we got 9.21 into 10 to the power minus 5 joules right so this is the work done when it is 1 millimeter this is the work done in 3 millimeter then what is the net work done difference between these two wd1 minus wd2 we need to subtract these two value so what we got 1.83 into 10 to the power minus 4 joule the net work done by moving the distance between the plate from 1 millimeter to 3 millimeter this is the total work done net work done 1.83 into 10 to the power minus 4 joules so in this video we discuss the energy stored in capacitor then followed by energy density then one problem we discussed based on the energy density energy stored